editing Shaylee. I'm letting you know right now at the beginning, this video is long, clearly. This month was very full to the brim of passion, of love, and hate. So, I understand it's long and it's a wrap up. So if you don't wanna watch it all, I understand. But make sure you stick around for the book that I go into that I hated and the book at the end that I loved because that's, that's all that really matters. Most of these other books are in another video anyway. So yeah, I apologize it's so long, but I am who I am. So hope you enjoy some of it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up. And uh, as always, this is not what my wall looks like. I tried to put wallpaper on this wall and I bought it from Amazon and I don't even know why I attempted. I put one this one sheet up and decided it was very ugly. I didn't like it, but it's just in the shot and it is what it is. I still haven't taken it down because I haven't decided what I'm doing. Anyways, um, so this is my first month. If you watched my last video, um, I talked about how I'm not going to be doing the star rating system anymore. Just a sec. I have lines on my face. Okay. Light probably just changed. Sorry if you can hear people outside. This is my life. We all know this. It is what it is. So anyways, this is the first month of me skipping the star rating system. I have uh, star rated these on Goodreads and probably some other places because I didn't start deciding that until the end of the month. But anyways, let's keep this as short as we can. So we'll just get into it. I'm going to start with what I read first. And that is my new favorite book of the year into my top five favorite books of all time. The Reckless Love We Made by Bryn Greenwood. So if you're new to my channel or and watch me very much. Um, I read All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood and absolutely loved it. Like one of my favorite books of all time. And when I found out that she was putting this book out, I had actually put it on my Goodreads list before it had a title. I think it had a title, it didn't have a cover yet. I read this one as soon as I could. It was the first thing I read. I read it in like two days, which is crazy for me because this book is like over 400 pages. So I read it in like two days. This is amazing. Um, if you don't know what this book is about, it's very, very, very different, different topic than all the ugly and wonderful things, but the writing style is exactly the same and that's why I love it so much because I just absolutely love the way that the uh, all the ugly wonderful things was written. I love Bryn Greenwood's writing style. I just think it's amazing. Anyways, this is about uh, a woman who is described as tall and redhead. What does she say? No one's fairy tale princess, almost six foot with a redhead's temper and a shattered hip. She has a list of worries. So she's kind of that, um, she's very sassy, very opinionated, doesn't take any crap. And she has a lot on her plate. Her, she was in a motorcycle accident and like I said, it has shattered her hip. So she deals with that and that pain of it and not being able to do anything because she doesn't have money. And so she is also like taking care of her mother who is housebound, slightly bed ridden. She's very um, overweight and can't really do much for herself. And then she has a sister who has a son and they kind of depend all on Z to pay for everything and help them out. And so she has all of that and she can't afford it. She tries to do odd jobs, but most of the time she just uh, is kind of like a drug smuggler. She just smuggles like weed and stuff. And anyways, in her physical therapy, she meets a guy 
and his name is Gentry and this is a, such a complex book to explain but basically Gentry is on the autism spectrum which is the topic that is so near and dear to my heart I just absolutely love reading stories and characters on the spectrum again if you don't know my daughter is on the spectrum so it's something that I just love a whole lot and so he's just the sweetest and this is where this book is hard for people I wrote this in my Goodreads review that I just really appreciate what Bryn went for I think she probably knew that Gentry's character was not going to be for everybody but he is one of the most realistic realistically portrayed autism rep I have seen in a book so he is basically how he learned to speak is by going to not renaissance fairs but like renaissance night battle things I don't know can't remember what they're called and so he speaks in old English and his chapters um so that's what I love about her writing style is the way that she writes it so like each chapter so this one is written in Z's perspective and then it will be in Gentry's perspective and other people's and stuff but Gentry's is all written in old English and even for me some parts are very hard to understand and it kind of takes you out of the story if you're not used to it and stuff but if you know anything about autistic people is a lot of times when they find something they love like you're all in <laughs> right now my daughter um she's for the last couple of years just animals in general everything in animals she doesn't speak yet she's almost five um but the things that she does say are animals she knows every animal every sing animals i didn't even know existed like a quokka she knows all these logs all of these birds and everything anyways so she's absolutely obsessed and so that is just gentry's life he believes that he is a knight and he has these voices in his head there's the black knight the witch Oh, yeah, it's the Black Knight, the Witch, and some other guy, and it's kind of like these voices in his head that but he sees, and the Black Knight is kind of the one who peps him up and kind of gives him his gusto, and the Witch is this spiritual guide for him, and so a long time ago, the Witch told him that one day he was going to um, be what is called a champion to a lady, I can't remember what the lady's called, but so he's waiting for this woman to come and he sees Z in physical therapy and he, the witch, tells him that that's his lady. And so he just believes that he is her champion. And some horrible things happen to Z and her family and things that she has to do. And Gentry, it's not even so much that he loves her in the beginning. It's just that he wants to be her champion and will do anything to protect her and keep her safe. And so he goes along with her and it's just, it's so great. I've heard people just saying they don't enjoy this story and that's fine. Again, everyone has their own opinion, but I loved this story so much and I just want to read it again. I might do a reread of both All the Ugly and Wonderful Things and The Reckless Oath just to like do it all again because I just love it so much okay i promise i'm not gonna talk this much about every book but i just love this book so much and i just i will love it forever and ever and ever so lastly i'm just gonna talk more about why i love the writing style it's exactly what i think about when i need it in a book because there are quite a few perspectives but there's only really two there's gentry and then there's z that make up the majority of this but you'll ran so it'll be like one chapter of Z, one chapter of Gentry, two chapters of Z, and then all of a sudden you'll get a chapter of her nephew. Marcus, oh see, I turned right to it, Marcus. He's chapter 18. 
and you'll get just a couple pages right there. It's only two and a half pages and then it goes back to Z. It just gives you this little teeny taste of you when I'm like wondering when something's happening. I'm like, well, what is Marcus thinking? Like what is, and it just gives you that, it gives you that little bit and then that's it. You don't need to know. It doesn't go deeply into these other characters. It just helps build the story in a more full and just glorious way that I love so much. And I wish every single book was written that way. It seriously, ugh. And then, Bryn's characters are just amazing. I mean, I'll remember Gentry and Z <laughs> forever. They will live in my heart forever, right along with, uh, and now I'm not gonna remember them because I am <laughs> doing it for a video. Any other time I can tell you what the characters from her other one is. Let's see, I can think real fast. Wavy and Kellen. I love Wavy and Kellen just as much. And I just love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And if you don't, that's okay, because like I said, this one I understand is going to be hard, just like All the Ugly and Wonderful Things was hard for people because it's a very hard topic. This with the Old English is very hard as well. So anyways, I will stop talking about that one. <laughs> Next up is a book that I've already talked about in my video with my secret TBR that I was reading the Kayla from Books and Lala's some of her favorite hard-hitting contemporary books and that was uh, the first time she drowned by Carrie Clutter. I listened to this book on audio and this is my it was fine. It was one of those ones where I didn't care too much about anything that was happening and then the last I don't know 50 or so pages was like super awesome and amazing and I loved it but so this was just uh it was fine uh, I'm sure there's tons of people that absolutely love it and I think that I mean you should read it if it interests you it's about a girl who is first starts out she's in a mental institution that her family put her in she's in there for years and she's finally turning 18 where she's able to release herself and she's going out into the world she starts in college because she doesn't want to go home but she doesn't really want to go to school and it's just really mostly about um it's her relationship with her mom and the toxicity that it is and it does lots of like past and present and back and present and things like that and seeing how it all connects. I just didn't love it. The character, her mother's character, and even her character, I don't remember her name. What's her name? Cassie. Both Cassie and her mother's characters, I think were meant to be unlikable characters, but I just really did not like them. I didn't care about Cassie, and I couldn't stand her mom. She just infuriated me, but that was the entire point of the mother role, at least. And so... Yeah, I think it had some good points. I enjoy a book when there is like some love, some uh, factuation in it, but that's not the main topic. I think that if a book can do that well, it's a good thing because I don't think that only books need to only be written about a boy and girl falling in love, you know? So I enjoyed that aspect that there was that, but it was not the main focus. Next up was, I actually finished this one before I read that, but I read these all at the same time. Um, for that video again, and this was a love. I really, really enjoyed this book a lot. And that is This Song Will Save Your Life by Layla Sells. And this was just so sweet and so perfect. And just one of those books, I explained it in that wrap up as well. It's just like, it's just like a movie for me. I love when a book doesn't take me much to like, get into it and see it it's just written in a way that it just flows so nice and I'm able to just see it all and even when I put the book down I pick it back up and I'm right back in I just love that and I was really hesitant going in because this is about a 15 16 year old girl and I just thought it was gonna be really immature because that's my complaint about YA it's just the immaturity of characters which is fine I mean they're allowed to be immature but I just don't think I enjoy reading that anymore and so she wasn't at all. She was very mature for her thinking and very, had great thoughts and I loved the music. I'm a huge music 
person so I really connected on that level with it so the music was awesome in it I love I think it's way super cool at the end of this book just the stuff that she has in it um well first let me talk about what it is and then I'll tell you what's at the end so it's about a girl who is really struggling with finding out who she is and she in the beginning of the book wants to just be cool and be popular and so she tries to change herself to be accepted into like the cool group because she's just always been made fun of and bullied and she's sick of it and so she buys all the cool clothes and does all the cool stuff and it still doesn't make anyone want to eat lunch with her or, you know and so she stumbles upon in this late night walk this kind of like underground hidden disco what about disco um eh, what am I thinking what is it called underground dance club yeah. and she falls in love with DJing and just the joy of meeting other people who are into music like she is and just the feeling of being a DJ and what that brings for her and she meets some really cool new friends and just interesting characters. The characters were super awesome. I love them all. They're very colorful and just fun to read. And so basically it's all about that. Her doing the DJ thing and finding out who she is and what she likes. So um, she gives at the end of it. Um, so it has, so her name is Elise. So this has... Elise's top songs to play at Start. Start is the name of the club. So it lists all of these songs and the artists. And then it has Elise's top 10 songs for walking at night, Elise's top 10 songs for studying, 10 breakup songs. And then she gives you a bunch of like discussion questions that you could use in like a book club type setting. And just it, this was just awesome. It was really short. Again, I read it in like one or two days and I just enjoyed it a whole heckin' ton. I thought it was really well done. Next for that same video was another one. I read a little bit of it, not much. The majority I listened to on audio and that is Everybody Sees the Ants by A.S. King. And this was, I think I'm gonna say, a love because it wasn't just a meh. So this is where I think again, I'm like, if I would've went to the rating system, like this probably would've been like a four. Because at the time I finished it, I was like five. It was amazing. It was so great. But then like kind of things went on. I remember some things that I didn't love about it. And I was like, okay, so not quite a five, so a four. But I just hate doing that. Like I said, we're not going to ramble into that. The whole point is, is this is, I would say, this is a love. Generally, overall, I did say in that video, um, there is a use of the R word. I didn't love that, but I just loved A.S. King's writing of this. It was a super interesting story and just not, I just like to read things that aren't the same thing you read all the time. And I think that's what's going to be with A.S. King. And I'm super excited to finally read her first one. And now I can dive into the five other ones that I have on my shelf of hers. I was super worried because everyone either loves it or hates it. But I think I'm going to like her writing a lot. It's that realistic fiction, not realistic fiction, like, uh contemporary with a speculative twist and this is about a boy who again is being bullied it's funny I had a lot of read a lot of mother-daughter hard relationships and a lot of young kids being bullied that seemed to be the theme of this month so it's another young boy who's being bullied in high school by this one specific boy and um his parents just get sick and tired of it and so his mom takes him to Arizona and he meets his uncle and he kind of learns some things from him and <laughs> the 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 main part of the story the part that's the gripping that everybody sees the ants part is since he's a little kid he has been dreaming of saving his grandpa from laos from the vietnam war because he was lost and never found and it was his grandma's dying wish for him to be brought home and so every time he dreams of it it's like he's getting him out like closer and closer to getting him out and getting him out and he he wakes up he is holding things from that time there's you know cigars and playing cards and I think one time he like wakes up he's like all dirty and you know, just different things like that. And he is like, you know, obvious. It's one of those, but that's the thing that's so 
why I liked it and I think this is the, the weird part is it's not like he talks about it like oh my gosh this is so weird like what the heck is happening like it's just normal to him he knows <sighs> it's weird like it's one of those things like he thinks he's gonna save his grandpa but like he also really knows that it's a dream and that this isn't really happening but then it's also like when he wakes up and has these things he just puts them into like this box that he's been saving and then this box has all the things he's ever come back with and it's like no big deal he's just like eh, puts it in the thing and never you know never talks about it, never goes on but the the dynamic of the story with him and his grandpa at the end especially is just so great and i thought it was really thought-provoking and necessary and just beautiful and this book was just really well really well written and I just enjoyed it a whole heck of a time man I just really it was a good time and that's what I want for a book I just want a good time um next up is the last book from that video and it was probably the biggest disappointment that I had and one of the biggest disappointments I have had in a long time in a book thought it was going to be easily a five star read and this was just um meh and that is everything beautiful is not ruined by danielle young ullman and the premise of it sounds really great about a girl going to this like survival wilderness camp to we don't know <laughs> to do something and that intrigues me, but this is also another mother-daughter relationship book. This was the second one. The present time is her being at the camp. And if that was where the book focused and like seen things happening and then just like went back every once in a while, I would have given this probably a love. But literally we got hardly any, like if you were to put it all together, it was probably like seriously this much camp this much past stuff that i didn't really care about and like i said in the other video like i understand that it was necessary to understand the ending but i just feel like the past stuff had details that didn't matter that didn't have anything that didn't do anything for the book there could have been a lot taken out and a lot more added and i just would have i would have liked to have read it read a different version of this story it had the potential to be super awesome anyways this is about a girl like i said who goes to a wilderness camp because her mom used to be this famous opera singer she got nose on her vocal cord and couldn't sing anymore and basically her life was over she didn't know what to do she kind of became super depressive and not the nicest and not very motherly and so the daughter really struggled and she starts to learn that she wants to sing and so she wants to go to this um she's been accepted into a famous singing school in europe and she wants to go but her mom says the only way that she'll do it is if she does this camp and so the plot twist at the end I did not see coming I loved the ending so much it was so impactful and so just awesome but the rest of the book again I just did not care at all it was so boring this book took me forever to read I think it took me like two weeks to get through this book I read all these other books in the meantime I'm trying to read these ones I'm sure tons of people will really enjoy this me not so much. I DNF'd this next book and that is Blindness by Jose Armango and I DNF'd it not because it was necessarily bad or I wasn't you know enjoying I wasn't enjoying it. <laughs> I was gonna say, not that I wasn't enjoying it but no I wasn't enjoying it. Um I'm just looking through this. I listened to the audiobook but I'm looking I'm like this doesn't have like paragraphs or anything it's all just Anyways, um, this was just a book that I picked up at a dollar library sale that sounded interesting. And so listening to it, it was just so confusing. <laughs> the premise of this is awesome. And this has been made into a movie. I'm going to see if I can find it because I think this would be a really great movie. And probably would be a really great book. But it was just so like, okay, let me say... First. So it's about this epidemic 
illness that starts to happen where people, it starts with one person, suddenly he just becomes blind. It's just everything goes white. And he's driving and so then he stops driving and the people try to go like get him in his car and he's like I can't see and then basically anytime someone he came in contact with then they become blind and then whoever they come in contact with and it's just like this chain reaction and so the only thing that they can think to do is to kind of quarantine them into this old hospital I think and they have like two sections where it's the people who are blind and the people who are probably going to become blind because they've been in contact with these other people and one of the characters in it is a eye doctor who he had went to and then his wife and so the doctor becomes blind and his wife is just like okay well I'm gonna be blind too I'm going with you and she just tells them that she's blind also so she can go with her husband because they don't want to be separated but it's going through this book and she's never like becoming blind because it's pretty fast that it happens and she's just never it's not ever happening to her so I'm assuming if I would have went on she probably never is going to become blind she's for whatever reason immune if I had to guess but I didn't like the way it was written I can't even remember now but it was like you never if I remember it, it was like you never really knew whose perspective they were talking from like it was really confusing it was almost like this person who was just kind of seeing it all was explained and they would just like switch to somebody else and they'd be like the doctor is saying this and blah 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 but the wife and the, I don't know I just didn't enjoy it and it was just so like sounds really but it's like so medical that's like the word I can think of but not really it wasn't medical but it was just like really dry really just like it could have been done really well like it made it really exciting but it was just like every little tiny detail and just so I'm sure there's people who really enjoyed this and I got I think like 30 35 percent of the way through and I was just like I'm not enjoying this I don't really want to waste my time I'll just watch the movie <laughs> if anything so this was a not for me okie dokie let's see to get these in the right order the next three books um were for my contemporary a thon and i haven't done the wrap up i was going to vlog but i didn't do any vlogging and i don't know if i'm gonna get to the wrap up my life has just got busy so this might just be the wrap up for it um but i read three three things and the first one that I completed, I was doing an audiobook, and that is The Smell of Other People's Houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. And this was a love. This book was really good. I would, this is where it's hard, like I have to make those decisions. I really would have liked to have physically read this book, but for the time reasons, and it was the only one that I had an audiobook for, for Contemporary Thon, I just listened to the audiobook. But the audiobook was done so well. And so nice and I just really enjoyed it it's just, just short little nugget of goodness that I think is important it's about um this group but they're not a group but a group of teenagers living in Alaska and just it portrays the situation of Alaska and what they go through and just teenage in general what they have to go through and it was just really real and eye-opening and heartbreaking and beautiful and I don't feel like I can I don't want to tell anything that happens to any of the characters I mean all of it happens pretty early on but I just don't I feel like it's so short and I don't want to I just want if you haven't read this yet I know I'm really late to the game but if you haven't read this yet just read it. I was actually kind of apprehensive going into it. I don't know if I was going to love it just because I feel like no one really goes into detail of what this book is about. And so just didn't really intrigue me. But it's really good. Each kid, you kind of know throughout the story that somehow they're all going to tie together. And as the story goes on, you say, you see how they tie together. And in the end, and it's just so good and just really beautifully written. So there's Ruth, Dora, Alice, and Hank. It says Ruth has a secret that she can't hide forever. Dora wonders if she can ever truly escape where she comes from. 
Alice can't bring herself to lead the life she's always known. Hank and his brothers decide it's safer to run away. So, yeah. If you haven't picked it up yet, just pick it up. Next is the very first thing that I picked up for contemporary a -thon. And I gave a little teaser in my last video talking about rating systems where I said, um, I have the, the system of a hate and, uh, I won't be giving it out very frequently because this doesn't happen to me very often, but man, oh man, did I hate this book. How I Live Now by Meg Ross, Rosoff, Rosoff. This, again, was a premise that sounded so good. Like, I'd forgotten all about it, and then in my contemporary TBR, I read the back and I was like, oh, that sounds way good. Like, it talks about it's a 15-year-old New Yorker. She's sent to live in the English countryside with her cousins that she's never met. England is attacked and occupied by an unnamed enemy. They find themselves on their own. Power fails. System fails. As they grow more isolated, the farm becomes a kind of Eden with no rules until war arrives in their midst. And it's like, I just kept thinking about it. And as I was reading the book, I'm like, okay, this sucks so bad. But I just want like that to happen. Like the magic that was behind this book. I just wanted it to happen. Wanted to have, wanted it to happen. It just wasn't happening. It was so strange. Oh my gosh. Okay. This one I might talk a little bit about, so skip ahead if you're bored already. So, from the very first page, I actually vlogged this part. There was a typo, like a, gram a grammatical error, like in the very beginning. And I'm not one that I'm super grammatically, grammatically accurate. Like, that's probably not even right. Like, I don't, that's not my forte. But when I can notice something, girl, you know it's bad. And so I just kept reading and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Oh my gosh. I'm going to insert the screenshot, press play, and read this freaking page. And this was just a taste. Like, there's no, I don't know if this has been translated. I tried to figure out, it didn't say anywhere that it's, like, been translated. But I did a lot of deep diving on this, on Goodreads and stuff. Because I got on Goodreads, I'm like, other people have to be talking about how horribly written this is. Hardly anyone is talking about it. The only thing people are talking about, spoiler, don't listen to this if you really care to read this book. Because I didn't know until I looked at Goodreads. But I guess it's not really that big of a spot. Anyways, she like falls in love and they have an incestuous romance with her cousin. And that whole thing is weird. Like not weird. Like I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> that sounds bad. Not in the sense of like, anyways, you know what I mean? I enjoy reading about that stuff, but it was like, give it some kind of context or something. Like it was just weird. It was like just weird teenage horniness around each other that I barely started getting into before I finally stopped reading. But um, so that's what mainly everyone was talking about on Goodreads. No one was talking about how horribly written it was, it was, but it's like, so for instance, there's never any quotation marks around anything. Like, let me see if I can hurry and find. Okay. Then he picked up more or less where he left off and said, I'm sorry, perhaps I should explain about the drugs. I'm Dr. Jameson, but there's never any quotation marks and it doesn't really like, and then, uh, so that was the one thing. And then it was like weird capitalization. Some of it was because like where the quotation marks should have been, they had a capital letter, but then there was just like random weird things. Like then there's this one, like, I don't know why all of that is capitalized. It just says, and we all know what he's talking about. And I want to shout, no. And that, I mean, that's, we especially, and then it says, and I want to shout no, no is all capitalized. We especially, all capitalized, do not need any government supplies, surplus parents. <laughs> I can't even read it, it's just so. So, do not need any government surplus parents, thank you very much. All in capitals, 
no period. Then I'll go back and says, but I don't say anything and neither does anyone else. So he sighs his tired sigh and goes. But it's just these huge run on sentences. Like paragraph long sentences. Oh, where can I find the part? Oh, so here's an example. All of this is capitalized. So it's can you read that part right there? Like, why is she died to give you life? Why is that all capitalized? Like, I don't get it. Okay, anyways, back to my rant. Where? Oh, I just read a part and that's another thing I can talk about while I'm looking is, like, she's super young. I think she's only like 13 or 14. Like, this is targeted to young like 13 14 year olds and the things that come out of her mouth sexually describing things like there's a whole scene about walking in on a boy masturbating in a classroom when he was supposed to be in an assembly and like what she said to him and like I mean it's it's a bit much for that uh age range I would say so let me, I'm just going to read a little excerpt here. So she's first getting onto the farm. She says, there's a farmer who comes. Okay, this is all, this is how I'll preface it. This is all, oh no, it's not. There is one little period. I lied. Okay, anyways. So it says, there's a farmer who comes and does all the planning because Aunt Pen always has important work to do, which is all capitalized. Related, oh, that's capitalized too. Related, related to the peace process in any way wouldn't, and anyway, wouldn't know the first thing about farming, according to Edmund. But they keep sheep and goats and cats and dogs and chickens for decorations, said Osbert in a slightly sneery way. And I'm getting the feeling about him that he's the only cousin who reminds me of people I knew in New York City. Edmund and Piper and Isaac and Osbert and Jet and Jin and Jin, the black dog and white dogs and a bunch of cats all went into the kitchen first and we sat down. Okay, now here's my example. Okay, so first off, you already know what I'm going to say, right? So why do we need to know every single person that was there? And it's an and and an and and an and and an and and an and. It comes up multiple times in the book. Okay, here's the example. This is all one sentence. There is one comma. I will do this when the comma appears. Are you ready? Are you ready? Edmund and Piper and Isaac and Osbert and Jet and Jin the Black and White Dogs and a bunch of cats all went into the kitchen first and sat down at a woody table and someone made cups of tea and then they all stared at me like I was something interesting they had ordered from a zoo and asked me lots of questions in a much more polite way than whatever happened in New York where kids would pretty much wait for some grown-up to come in all fake cheerful and put cookies on a plate and make you say your names. Guys, this book was horrendous. <laughs> horrendous I got to page 62 and I couldn't take it anymore it was written like even just the way it was written it was like I was reading nothing like it was so poorly written I was just trying to be like okay I'm just gonna skim it and get this over I couldn't skim it because my brain couldn't follow it because it was written so bad and they're like was no periods or quotations or anything I heard some people talking about in the defense of it that I think it was supposed to be written in like this was her journal and that's why it doesn't have like proper flow and things or dialogue happening but there is dialogue and so it just is so confusing and if it was meant to be that way then it needed to be written into like journal entries or stated that way or something it is just so bad and so painful I have never experienced anything like this and if you like this book please tell me why does this stuff back here actually happen and like is it good and intriguing because that's the thing is like I said it was like nothing was happening they were on this farm and then it's like things start happening the war or whatever starts happening but then it's like nothing really has happened I don't know it was so bad oh my gosh it was so bad I would love to hear if anyone else has read this and has experienced this I apologize there's like an eyelash in my eye anyways if you like that book 
please tell me. I would love to know. Because I would love to know why. <laughs> Pull myself together here. The last book that I read for the contemporary... Oh, wait. I guess I have to say that because this isn't in the order. I finished this book, which was not um, temporary thon. I could make it for yellow on the cover, but I technically read some of it before and whatever. Anyways, I read this during contemporary thon. A hundred pages I physically read and then I got the audiobook for it. And so I finished listening to it on the audiobook. And that is Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. This book was a love. It was really great. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. I thought I wasn't going to actually finish it. You'll see in my TBR, I didn't put in, this was in my La La shelf, and so I didn't put a book from my La La shelf, because I thought I was going to have to finish this one later, but I ended up getting to it. La La La, lots of things that you don't care about. Uh, so I don't think I'm going to pick a book, because I read quite a few from my La La shelf this last month, so I'm not going to pick one from there, and I have a ton of books on my upcoming TBR for the month. You will see later. But anyways, back to Emma in the Night. Um, this is about uh, two girls who go missing and one returns home without the other and she is trying to get the detectives and her parents to find Emma. And I don't know. I feel like when I go into like mystery thrillery stuff, I'm just constantly being like, okay, this is what's gonna happen. And I try to like outsmart the book. And I don't feel like it was anything like, holy cow. Like I kinda, like I, I knew, but I didn't exactly know. Like I kinda knew where it was gonna go, but there was a few little things that were different than what I thought was gonna happen. But it was really good. It was really, really intriguing. I would have loved to keep physically reading this book. I think from now on, I'm really going to try to physically read thrillers, mysteries, things like that, because I just feel like it will be a better experience. Not that audiobooks aren't great, but just my feelings about audiobooks, like I talked about in the past, they can either make or break the book. And I think um, that thrillers maybe should just be physically read for me. I don't want to give too much more away in this book, but it's really good. I don't really know if this is young adult. It's almost kind of like, mm, it's like new adult. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think they're like high school age, but it's also from the perspective of the detective who is obviously not in high school. Um, and then the girls aren't really in high school because they've been kidnapped when they come back. They're like, I think 18, 19, something like that. Anyways, so that was thoroughly enjoying because I don't tend to enjoy young adult thrillers at all. But this was great. And lastly, I just finished this book. Um, I read it for Contemporary-a-thon. I finished it the day after Contemporary-a-thon, but I still counted it. And this is another love. Not a Drop to Drink by Mindy McGinnis. Holy camoly. So I've talked a little bit about in past, let me just get comfy here. I've talked about it in um, a couple of videos of the reason of me trying to read more and do different challenges and read people's recommendations is because I'm finding that I don't think I really know what I like to read. And I own quite a few because the synopsis is always sounds so good to me, but quite a few of like dystopian, post-apocalyptic kind of stuff. And I think that that's like my jam. I really do because I really like it. And it's one of those things that's it's not shameful, but I feel weird. I think it might be even okay this is gonna dive do a deep dive into my brain this is a deep wrap up you guys it's probably gonna be really long um but i think i could like fantasy some fantasy because i'm finding that books that are like post-apocalyptic and not like cutesy love story not that I don't like those books 
but it just like intrigues my brain so much like when it's a good story that's just I don't know how to describe but you know what I mean like fiction <laughs> not just a story about a man and a woman or a woman and a woman and a man and a man whatever about two people falling in love or not just like like I've said in the past I have to have plot in my stuff like when it's just strictly a character driven story I don't rate them very high I don't enjoy them very much they're just drag and they're boring and I don't see the point they just aren't that good to me I need just like a good story and these are generally so interesting and actiony and like just really keep my attention and like physically there were so many times reading this book that I was just like I'd be reading it it was literally this was me I'd be laying in bed and then I'd just be like ah! oh my gosh or put it down just oh like why like oh my heck this book let me tell you what it's about <laughs> since I haven't done that this is a book it's the first book in a series and I do think I will continue it's about and that's the other thing I thought about I'm like maybe it should have been for a contemporary film because it's not really it's not like futuristic but it's not set in our time I think it's one of those books that it's like think about it if it was this time this could happen at any time basically so what it is is um the world is low on water and everybody's being taxed for it. So there's this girl, uh, her name, I've already forgotten, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn and her mother live in this cabin and they have this pond and her mother has burned it into her some of the time she was born that all they do is to survive. They have to have water and so they must protect this pond with their lives. They live on the roof basically going in alternating shifts of protecting it and they will shoot anybody who even comes near it no questions asked and then it's like having to there's no electricity there's no running water there's no people like Lynn has never met a single other person other than her mom like there's a journey she goes through of like finding out who men are like she knows that there's men she does meet one man one time when she's very little and he lives across the way his name is Stebbs and um but she doesn't understand like even like what love is and just like the development that she goes through is so crazy and mind-blowing to be like yeah what if you literally never met a single other person other than your parent and like then you meet people how weird would that be like so spoiler not spoiler she does start meeting some people and she meets this boy and he's like trying to like he's flirting with her and she's like not she's being you know she doesn't understand and he like says something about like he's like I'm flirting with you like don't you get it and she's like I don't know what that means like what is flirting like I don't know like it's just really good but the heartbreak that will happen to you in this book You will go through it in this book. Just word to the wise, don't get attached to anyone. I mean, you know people are gonna die. It's, they're in this huge crazy famine with illness and no water and no medicine or anything and just, oh my gosh. I love books like this, guys. I think this is like my genre. I do, I love it. <sighs> so. Is this like a new favorite? I don't know. Oh boy. Now I can't get into that though. But this was the last book I read. And obviously this was a love. <laughs> and that, my friends, is my stack. I'm going to try and gently pull it over. I read one, two, three, four, five. Wait, I can't count my DNS. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight books this month dnsing two which if you put those two together that's probably another one <laughs> so you could say i read nine books this month i guess but that's like a crazy amount for me i'm blown away that i did it and actually i read another book but it's for another video and so i'm not going to talk about it yet so technically i read like 11 books this month 
which is crazy and mind-blowing for me. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this very long chatty video. I got really excited about some of these books, clearly, and got very passionate about some. So let me know. Have you read any of these? Are your thoughts the same as mine? Do you like the way I did the rating system? Let me know. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye!